Hello, everybody. Grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, today, I'm continuing my series, Exposing Converted to Islam's uh, Lies About Christianity and uh, Practicing Taqiyya, as Muslims always do. And uh, this is his video on Paul and crucifixion. Um, so let's hear what he has to say and really whether it's true or not or just a bunch of garbage. Hello. Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you from the God of Abraham, the God of Islam. Before I talk about this um, subject, the subject of Paul in the Bible, I would like to quote a verse from the Holy Quran, the Word of God. Chapter 4, verse 157 says, They said in boast, We kill Christ Jesus, the Son of Mary, the Messenger of Allah. But they killed him not, nor crucified him, but so it was made to appear to them, and those who differ therein are full of doubts, with no certain knowledge, <clears throat> but only conjecture to follow. For of a surety they killed him not. Nay, Allah raised him up unto himself, and Allah is exalted in power and all wise. <clears throat> okay, so in order for Allah to save Jesus, according to Islamic theology, he made it look as if it was Christ on the cross, meaning he deceived three billion human beings before... Sending, finally, the Quran 600 years later to set the record straight, when it was he himself that deceived them. This shows us three things. Number one, that the gospel writers did not lie when they wrote that Jesus died on the cross. They're only writing what they saw with their eyes. And who can blame them for that? They, they just wrote what they saw. It's not their fault that Allah deceived them. Number two, the uh, Islam teaches that... Um, that oh this isn't number two that but this is a part of the first one is that whom Allah guides is guided and whom Allah misguides no guidance for them so Allah misguided them meaning it was he himself that caused the Christianity that believes that Jesus died on the cross to start up and become the dominant religion showing number two that Allah does not know the future and he did not know that in doing that he caused Christianity to start and so many people to be um, misguided um, number three this shows that Allah is a great deceiver that he deceived everybody by making it appear as if Jesus was on the cross so meaning it was he himself that caused them to believe that Jesus was crucified according to what you just read from the Quran only to raise him up and this is funny because Muslims always say yeah Allah saved Jesus from death Allah saved him from death woo yeah right and then uh, th then the next breath they say oh when Jesus returns he's gonna die he's still w which has a whole bunch of problems in itself because they say Muhammad is the last prophet the last messenger when Jesus has still is still coming back and he's going to destroy the Antichrist and he is going to do he still has a mission to do for God meaning Muhammad is not the last prophet Muhammad is dead in the grave Jesus is still alive according to Islam now let's check out this verse of the Quran And they, the disbelievers, schemed, and Allah schemed against them, and Allah is the best of schemers. Okay, so this, first of all, why do Muslims get the creepiest voice they can find to play on a uh, uh, Quran Explorer? And they got the schemers. Sounds like a pedophile. Jeez. Um, anyways, why is Allah the best of the schemers? The real uh, Arabic is actually the the um, the deceivers. But you know they lie and they change and they try and falsely uh, translate it, which is why, by the way, Christians, if you ever wondered why they always believe we can't 
properly translate the Bible, it's because they don't properly translate the Quran. So because they're a bunch of liars, they believe that we must be like them as well, which is not the case. But um, anyways, why is Allah the best of the schemers? If he is God and he is the truth, why does he need to scheme? Can't he just be truthful and out, open and honest about it? Why does he have to scheme? This doesn't even make sense. But this is clearly showing us that Allah is the deceiver and he is Satan. Why? Because Satan wants to be worshipped as God. And Satan wants you to deny that Jesus died on the cross for your sins so you can be saved. Because that is the most important thing. Regardless of all of Jesus' teachings and miracles, which by the way are extremely important. The most important thing um, out of person, the most important human divine human god in the flesh who walked this earth was jesus christ and i'm by no means saying that his words are not important neither were his miracles but what i'm saying is the important of the important the most important thing is that he died on the cross for our sins as the perfect atoning sacrifice and what satan wants to do is to get you to deny that fact and he is the deceiver So, let's get to the subject here. Paul and the letter to the Galatians in particular. Paul says in Galatians chapter... First of all, he wants to say that you can't trust Paul. Before we go anywhere with this, that you cannot trust Paul, that Paul is a deceiver. Well, here we are at Tafsir Abin Kathir. Tafsir.com, this is an Islamic website, just like Quran Explorer. This is not an anti... Muslim web website I'm going to. This is your sources. One of the best scholars of Islam approved by Muslims worldwide. And this is an is Islamic book approved by Islam for 1400 years. And here we are saying that he's talking about um, in this particular about chapter 36. I'm um, talking about the messengers that the Messiah sent. Which is very funny because according to Islam only Allah sends messengers but here we see that Abin Kathir is saying that al Messiah, the Messiah sent messengers as well and here we are reading so we enforce them so we reinforce them with a third means we supported and strengthened them with a third messenger Abin Juria narrated from Wahhabi Wahhab bin Sulaiman from Sahu Ayyub al Jabai whatever the name of the first two messengers were Shaum, Sham Um, Un, and Yahuana, and the name of the third was Bolus, and the city was Antioch. Who is Bolus of Antioch? Well, Bolus is Arabic for Paul, Paul of Antioch, one of the strengthen the the strong messenger is what it's saying, one of the strong messengers of the Messiah. But for from the starting of Islam, they agreed with Paul. Until they realized what Paul taught didn't, was not in tune or in line with the Islamic theology. And then later along the road, they just kind of rejected him as a deceiver. Kind of baiting and switching the case there. And I'm out of time, so stay tuned for part two.